All right, post second recon ride, with Michael Marks. Let's uh, let's just kind of hear an overview. Like, what do you think of the day? You know, it was really fun. I don't know how many hundred people were here, but hitting the first dirt with several hundred people was very interesting. And then watching the various uh, skills navigate that first rock, sand, craziness, and then watching people run out of skills, and then you know, kind of navigating your way through all that mayhem, like it's uh, it's it's an experience to watch people having that experience. It was fun. Yeah, it was very large group obviously on the road but we weren't on the road that long and we hit that yeah. dirt and then just from there on it was just pockets of people throughout the whole day and some people met the cactus some people met the sand some people met broken collarbones everyone got to encounter the water crossing at least twice so they had wet socks um, and then there was climbing and a little bit of headwind on the way back more sand and headwind rocks, crashes, water crossings, um, climbing, complaining, loving life, everything in between. So we're just under a month out now. How's everything coming together? It's exactly one month out. Is it exact? Yeah. Today. So exactly one month out. Yeah. How, who's counting? How are we doing? Yeah, not you, obviously. Way too many people signed up. It's uh, a good problem. I guess. It just means there's more people trying to get in to whatever that first dirt sector is gonna be, the mayhem that will happen before will be nothing compared to the mayhem that happens when people hit that first dirt sector. No, that'll be epic. Are we looking, do you think the conditions today, the dirt, the sand, is gonna be pretty much what we'll have in a month? I think the washboards will be worse, the sand will be deeper, the headwinds will be worse, the climbs will be exactly what they are. They're not going to get easier? Uh, well, they'll only get easier if you actually train, but I, I don't think you have any plans to train now, do you? No. Um, maybe other We're people tapering. do. We're tapering. Yeah. Tapering now. Yeah. Four weeks out. So, uh, no, I don't. I mean, today was really sandy and, and washboardy, uh, and, but it'll get much worse, which is great. So, other than that, like the expo the day before, like people that haven't come to it you know they're probably starting to make their plans you know come check in what, what can they expect day before at the expo lots of really nervous people and then lots of the friends of the nervous people drinking and enjoying themselves and then laughing at the nervous people uh, making them even more nervous I think there will also be you know probably 70 vendors all of them there to like help people feel more comfortable and less anxious uh, but then also, once they start to look at like the IRC tent, they're like, oh, so which tires do you think I should use? Sh the, should I use tomorrow. the 28s or the 32s? And could you put them on for me? And like, what PSI would I use? And uh, all of that, that's probably a thousand of those conversations. Um, there'll be the beautiful Canyon bikes that people wouldn't have purchased that they wish that they had. Um, I saw a lot of Canyons today. Lots of Canyons, lots of canyon. yeah. I was on a canyon. Yeah, you're one of them. Um, so there'll be a lot of anxiety, a lot of fun. It'll be massive because there's so many more people this year. And then all those people bring their friends. I think the beer might actually run out at the brewery, which would be like one of the most awesome things ever. Sorry, we're out of beer, but you're a brewery. <laughs> Brew some up. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think's really, in your mind, elevated this year compared to years past where the numbers have gotten so much bigger like what can you put your I mean I'm sure you've thought about it like wh where do you think that's coming from um, a lot more female participation probably the best thing going for us this year way deeper pro field prize purse supporting the pro field and as you know uh, because of hydro the women are getting more money than the men um, I don't think the, the money so much brings the people. I think the challenge of the course and the depth of the field has made it more intriguing for people to come and enjoy. Um, I think the little film that we made maybe captured the imagination of enough new people. They're like, I'll give that a go. So it's kind of a confluence of things that have created this surge that we're experiencing this year. And 
the course will be as hard as it's ever been. So we're a month out. If anyone's on the fence, what can you kind of like tell them, like just to maybe get them here, or you know maybe stoke them, or Don't people let them. It's too hard. Don't think about it. Um, it's it's too much for you to handle. All right, perfect. Well, we'll see you in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Horny. Post recon ride at the Lost Abbey, pulled aside Steve from IRC. Let's get a little recap of of the dirt today and talk tires for upcoming BWR real quick. Yeah, John. Today was today was good. Today was beautiful weather wise. The the dirt was good. I thought it was uh, it was actually something we would see on race day. So the conditions were dry. Um, flowers were abundant. It was absolutely gorgeous out there. So a lot of people were riding the uh, the 32 Serac Sand, which was a which was a great choice. I, I think that's still a still a really good tire to uh, to get the job done. Um, again, the Marbella 28 is is something you would ride at the front of the pack um, if you really want to get it done on the uh, on the sharp end, as we say, of the race. So. Just from like a an observance point of view, because I know you're always looking. Like, what, we had like skill level, of, you know, all different sizes today. What, what did you see a lot of people riding on out there? Well, again, I, I think the 32 is is the tire choice. A lot of people were up and down on pressure. Pressure happens to be the biggest topic because everybody is running way too much pressure. You in in a IRC Serac Sand. The ideal pressure is around 40 to 50 psi, and and people are still used to running road pressures of 70, 80, 90. I heard, and, and again, your your day in the gravel is going to be really bad. So you you need to lower that pressure overall and and enjoy the uh, enjoy the gravel. The gravel is going to be fun. So speaking on that, the gravel terrain out there. Do you think today what we saw like the hard pack, but then there's sandy spots like. Do you think that's going to be pretty replica to like what we'll see next month? I, I think it's going to get drier as we go. It could be a lot sandier. And so I think the, the best way to handle that, and, and we discussed this before we, we kind of had this conversation, is to, to lighten up on the handlebar. Just, just grip, the, grip the hoods as well as you can. Don't grip it too firm and let the bike sort of steer itself. Keep on the power, keep pedaling, and the bike will, uh, will navigate its way through. So speaking on like tire pressure for what we saw today with the dirt, obviously we know what road is like. Let's spitball like 175 pound rider. What's his pressure? What should he be setting up to? I think he's a 40 to 50 psi guy if he's running the IRC tires. I really do. Anything like lighter up front, more in the back, or anything? Or do you keep pretty even? You could go a couple of psi lighter in the front and uh, a little harder in the rear, but uh, I think that's that's the perfect combination for race day. All right. You think uh, you think everyone's gonna be ready for this next month? How are you feeling with uh, what you saw today with, from the it, riders out there? It's really fun to see the uh, the vast riders we had today and and the reach of riders. We had riders coming all the way from Minnesota today, so, uh, up from Santa Barbara, coming for these recon rides. I, I think on game day, race day, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think it's gonna be on Cinco de Mayo. It's it's gonna be epic. So for everyone, you know, that's listening or tuning in and that they were not here today, they don't know what the riding is really like, what can you break down to like what they're going to, you know, if we're going to see what we saw today and next month, what, how can you kind of explain it to them what to get ready for? I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's all about hydration. You know, tires are one thing and, and getting your bike ready and all that is great. And, and certainly tires are, are the second thing you want to consider, but, but hydration overall is is the most important part we gotta we gotta remember at the end of the day it's a big day some of these some of these riders will experience the biggest day of their cycling career life and uh and so keep drinking keep drinking and keep eating yeah we saw a lot of salty people today and today yeah. today was a big day but it was yep. still not even what no. it was half maybe really? i think the temperatures the temperatures yeah. could actually be hotter and so again i mean we, you and i kind of rode together today and uh and hydration was such an important key out there, and uh, and the rest will uh, the rest will just uh, happen itself. All right, awesome. Well, hey, uh, before wrap that up, this up with you, we're getting hit up a lot, obviously, for getting IRC tires. Where can everyone go to grab some of those? You know what? There's a couple of different places. Jensen USA has is, is been a really good 
uh, sponsor for us, uh, for IRC. They've, they've supported, they've carried a lot of our tires in, uh, in volume. Uh, that's a great website, so JensenUSA.com and then also PureGravel.com. So either one of those guys can get you tires uh, pretty quickly. Perfect. All right, well, uh, I'll let you go back there and enjoy some more beers. Cool. Thanks, John. All right, Phil Tinsman, a veteran of the BWR. We just wrapped up the recon ride. What was your two cents on the day? Uh, it was an amazing day. You know, I think more than anything, it helped, uh, you know, the people that were questionable and what the course was going to entail for this, this year. Um, it gave them some more, you know, education, and they learned uh, what it's going to take, and it's going to be a rough day, but fun at the end. How are you feeling on, like, uh, the dirt conditions? you think it's going to be pretty similar to what we saw today? We'll see next month. You know, it's like we had a lot of rain, which helped a lot. But at the same time, I think it dried out quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. So I would expect it to be dry, slippery, soft, like more almost like summer conditions. Even though we've had, you know, quite a bit of, uh, you know, rain in the, you know, this year so far. But uh, it's going to be, you know... They did a lot of trail work, though, to... Yeah, it's definitely not as rocky. No, you know, the San Diego River Park uh, personnel did a lot of trail work, and they made it really smooth and nice for us today. And I expect, expect that to stay somewhat the same. So um, that part's nice, less rocks, uh, but I, I foresee some soft sand and um, lowering pressure and things to get through it better. Yeah, so speaking on that, like, let's say to all the people that weren't here today, that haven't made it out here yet. What can you really break down to them as what to expect come day of next month? You know, I'd expect it to be warm and, uh, you know, be ready to, you know, drink more than they were probably anticipating. Um, I haven't seen a weather forecast that far out yet. But, uh, you know, and the conditions, I would just say, you know, be prepared for it to be, you know, dry and loose and soft in the dirt areas, you know, and that's about it. What, uh, if you're going to do it, are you doing it? Um, I'm undecided in what I'm going to do. Like, okay. I might, I might just do the wafer, then chill with everybody, you know, and party for Cinco de Mayo after. So let's say, what, what's your setup going to be if you do it? Um, God, you know, like, I think a, I think there's two ways for me to look at it. It's like. If I'm going in it to win it, it's a totally different setup to go in to finish and have a lot of fun, which I think have a lot of fun is like a 32C. God, it's like IRC makes a great, you know, it's like the uh, Serac Sand tire, which is fast, but it still works good in the dirt. And I think that is the perfect kind of setup. And then, you know, it's like make sure you have enough gearing, you know, and carry water and make sure you have stuff to change a flat and tubeless and whatever. And like, I think you're golden. Yeah, I think that's a good point, like the gearing, because it is hilly, it's rolly, it's up and down. And even with the one by stuff, people be spinning out out there. Yeah, I think, you know, even lower than a one to one is uh, most optimum, you know, because it's like, I ran a one, you know, like, even like today, I ran a one by with a 40 in the front, a 42 in the rear, and I use it a lot, you know, it's like, why not spin instead of, you know, push a gear, so I think even, you know, like, if you can have a lower side, uh, it will work to your advantage towards the end, it's like, the hills are steep, double peak is 21%, you know, you want to be able to ride up it and not walk, so. All right, perfect, any uh, closing thoughts, tips, tricks, or anything for anyone? Um, you know, I think the biggest motivation is just to get back in a hurry so you can enjoy some Lost Abbey Ale. Well, Cinco de Mayo, so, you know. Right. Party time. Maybe a Belgian Michelada? I don't know. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Thank you. All right, we got another little familiar face from a previous podcast episode. Source Endurance Coach Adam Mills, also on the Recon Ride today. How was it? It was awesome, John. Thanks for having me. Uh, started off brisk, brisk being uh, chilly, I guess, and then uh, the the pace got got going briskly as well. As there's a lot of excited people out there, I, I think the conditions were similar to what we could expect on the main event day, and I think that just excited everybody to just push it a little bit extra. So we're about a month, just under a month out. You're a coach. What are people 
what do they need to start doing or thinking about like a month from the big day right now? So a month out, you should be finalizing equipment selection, uh, finalizing um, basic logistics for the whole day to make that as least amount of stress as possible. Um, if you have your like game day tires on, uh, they should be on by now. If you don't, then give IRC tires a call and, and get those things hooked up and ready to roll. Uh, but for the most part, the homework should be done. The good news is, I guess, if you're not, if you're not fit enough to do Belgian waffle ride by now, then, then you're probably not going to be. Uh, and, but if you are fit enough to do it by now, you're probably mostly the way there as far as, as main event day fitness goes. So you're thinking like month out, people should how much, I mean, do they have another two weeks to train hard? Or they start, when do they start tapering and resting? Or, like, how does that look for them? Yeah, ideally you're looking at <clears throat> probably two more weeks of good, solid training. Uh, and then after that, uh, mostly tapering, which which is always a, a little bit of a art piece of art for everybody individually. So just do what you think or what you know works best for you. Uh, typically that's shorter volume, maintain intensity, but for the most part, the homework's done, and you're looking at just uh, uh, kind of ironing out wrinkles and, you know, sharpening the, the pointy end for the, for the main event. So to get a little creative, let's say, you know, the week before BWR, it's on a Sunday. Like, what should riders do that week? Obviously, the training is done. Like, how much time do they rest? Do they do some openers? Or, like, what does kind of like an ideal week look like someone that is week of BWR? So the week of Belgian Waffle Ride, for the most people that are, are self-coaching or, or whatnot, I would say whatever you think you should do, do half of it. Um, there's going to be more benefit from being fresh and sharp than from being a little bit flat and a little bit tired. What about day before? Day before, I say come on the uh, Belgian Waffle Ride uh, pre-ride that we're going to have leaving from the expo um, more details on that to follow uh, and then just relax and take it easy and and try and make sure everything is ready so the day of you just basically get up you get dressed and you head on down to the to the lost abbey brewery and just get rolling should any openers they go out and kind of just coffee shop spin it like on, i mean how is that ride going to be tough or do they push a little bit to you know what do they what do they should they do physically on that ride so for the most part, you're going to ride easy. Um, you should do a couple pretty hard openers that are going to be hard enough where you're going to know you did something, but not long enough to really hurt you for the next day. What's an example of like a good opener? So a good opener would be probably two by three minutes of threshold power. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll see you in a month. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. Thanks a lot, John. Gotcha. Okay, so we are here post recon ride with Paul from the big red van Velofix that everyone sees on the roads. How was your day today? What'd you do? My day was fairly easy. We had people are making such good tire choices these days, and the last recon ride and today was another example where the the sport is spreading, BWR is spreading, a lot of newcomers. They, um, they made their way through, went at their own pace, but discovered what riding on dirt and road is all about. So you're, you're definitely the guy to come to you when someone's out having an issue. What, what is like the most common things that you'll see out there during like a BWR style event, you know, where it's mixed terrain, gravel, dirt, road, like they have issues. So they come to you like, what, what, are, what are people dealing with out there? Okay. So the, the biggest one obviously is flats. So if you can go tubeless, especially if this is your first, second, third time, or you, overall a good tire choice and going tubeless also carry a tube with you on your in your saddlebag so to uh, i mean sidewall tears that kind of stuff is the most common second is really rear derailleur hangers if somebody takes a spill they'd snap that off i think at last count correct me if i'm wrong we're up a, upwards of 193 or something almost maybe over 200 different style of derailleur hangers so <laughs> I always advise people in your saddlebag, tube, 
two CO2s, a derailleur hanger that matches your bike, and it just makes it easier for you. That's a that's a good tip. I actually haven't really heard that one yet. Um, so BWR is in a month. From your standpoint with what you do, how crazy is that day for you? It, it gets crazy, and, and the expo is super fun because we're just wrenching and, and setting up tubeless all over the place. I think last year we did, I think it was in at the end of, of the expo, it was like 138 tubeless setups, and that's customers. And So are, are these people like, oh, like, I've just never done tubeless. Should I do it? And you're like, yeah, definitely. Like, well, I mean, how are you doing yeah, that many or, people? Or like, they, day before. Or they're paying attention to the podcast and they're paying attention to blogs and they're, the word's just spreading on the right way to do this to do this event and to make it through with as minimal problem as, as possible. But uh, talk about crazy. I mean, yet, last year, pulled the van in and I delayed. I slept in a little and got here at five. And as soon as I pulled in, we had a line of 35 people at the van and it was all kinds of stuff <laughs> from charging my di2 battery for me to my tubeless isn't holding because they tried it in the hotel room the night before so it's just like anything in life just you know go through proper preparation if you if you have to do tubeless the night before then check it in the morning and or just don't or just, just don't yeah be ready so I mean, with your expertise, everything, everything you see, like, I think ideally nobody wants to come see you before the ride right. to add that to the stress. What is like, kind of like, what do they need to have ready to go on? Like, what, what does their checklist look like right now to be dialed in the week of BWR on their bike? Okay. So, um, I mean, the basics, basics are having a right bike, one that you're comfortable on, having the experience of going from one surface to the other. So once you're on the surface, I it's not super straightforward and easy if you haven't done it before, but going from one surface to the next is, is how I train people. So going from road onto sand, like at Bandy, or going from road at Mule Trail onto kind of that crushed stuff, or at the top of Double Peak, going off road onto the man, you know, man crushed surface that they have up there on the hiking trail. That's one of the things is making sure you're comfortable on your bike. And then everything else we talked about is getting, making sure your bike is dialed in. I mean, it's like every event, BWR is a, is a different level of rider. Even if they're a beginner, they've put, most of them have put the work in. But that, I mean, race day morning, we still see the funniest stuff, but it keeps my life interesting. So if someone does have to come see you, well, I mean, what, what can you, what can you offer them as far as like, what, what can you, like, what is the big red van out there? You know, so, you know, I, I still want to be like, oh, I wonder if they can do this or what are they, yeah. like, what, what can the van do? Well, uh, to answer both of your questions, I mean, book, I've blocked off in San Diego County and in Orange County, we got in LA and so forth, wherever you're coming from, there are Bellafix vans there. I mentioned those areas cause they work the event on race day. So they have all the equipment, all the essentials that you're gonna to need to get your bike set up. As far as preparing beforehand, our, I blocked off my whole schedule that whole week. So people are shipping their bikes into me, I'm building them, delivering them to their hotels. Locals are already scheduling appointments with me to get all set up. If you don't have that choice, you're a busy, you know, busy professional and you're flying in on Thursday evening Come see us at the expo. We, we will have two vans, four mechanics, just working nonstop from before the expo opens to well, you know, well after it closes. And then if you have an emergency, we will be here 5 a.m. on race day. And then the last thing I'll say is this year we'll have six vans out on the course. And we're going to take, uh, learned a lot last year from doing it. So we have a new approach that we're taking. So be prepared yourself. But if you happen to not, you know, if you have an emergency or you need a quick fix or just need to stop at the van to refill your water bottle, the vans will be out there. Perfect. Well, always, Paul, thank you. You always come through. Right on. And we'll see you in a month. Sounds good. Or before. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so post-recon ride, we found out that Christy. Christine. Christine, sorry, mm -hmm. just met, came from San Francisco to do the... Iron Man yesterday. Yeah. Half. 
half Iron Man, half Iron Man yesterday in Oceanside, yeah. in Oceanside, and then she showed up for the recon ride today. Mm -hmm. How are your legs feeling? Uh, they're pretty tired. I think I'm not going to be able to walk tomorrow, but uh, it was great to get out there today and uh, you know ride in the gravel and meet some folks. It was it was awesome. So are you going to do BWR or is this just kind of like, oh, good timing, like I'm going to do the you know Iron Man and go recovery ride tomorrow with everyone for 80 miles? Uh, nope, I'm doing the BWR, the full waffle. Uh, and I, it was great timing that I happened to be down here for the Iron Man and figured I would stick around for another day and do the recon ride. So will this be your first BWR? It is. My first gravel ride ever, oh, actually. Newbie. Okay, so let's get your two cents. What did you think of the terrain, riding gravel, like you're a triathlete, I imagine, mostly? Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on today and the riding? Um, I love gravel riding. Uh, I'm new to it, but I think it's a lot more mentally engaging than, than road riding. So it's, you know, kind of pick your line, figure out where you're going to go. Uh, it's just, it's, it's more interesting than kind of cranking on a road and going straight for a long time. Do you have any, like, background like mountain biking or anything like that or just like hey i'm just trying it out now uh honestly i bought a gravel bike for the belgium waffle ride i've never been on a mountain bike <laughs> awesome so, so you're ready to go <laughs> yeah maybe mountain mountain biking later in life but not for not for now okay what uh we always like to talk tires and stuff what, what was your tire setup for today uh i think i had 28s i, I, I have what like, did you ride just a bike. road bike no i had a gravel bike i have a uh, trek uh checkpoint okay uh so yeah, whatever wheels came with that bike. <laughs> uh, that's what I rode today. So are you after... I have a lot to learn, as you can tell. No, this is great. Travel riding. This is great. Um, after you rode today and you kind of saw what's going to be out there on the ride, you feel pretty confident? You feel like he's, you know, walking the park for you? Since it'll be like, you won't have a triathlon the day before, so it should be easy. Um, I wouldn't call any 136-mile race or 134-mile race a walk in the park, uh, but... I think the ride today was a little bit less technical than I thought it was going to be, so I feel pretty good coming into you know the waffle ride in, in May. Um, yeah, I can I can climb pretty well, so there was a lot of climbing today, and happened to be on sand, which was made it more interesting. Always. Uh, are you are you coming to like you know race get get top finish? Obviously, we just met. I don't really know how good you are. <laughs> if you're you know a weekend warrior, I imagine you're pretty good. But what do you what's your what's your goals for that? Uh, I just want to go out there and have fun. Um, you know, I want to finish it and do my best, and, and I have no idea where I'll place, or I haven't really thought about it that much. I just kind of want to go out there and meet some people and have a good time riding and try something new. Perfect answer. All right, so girl, triathlete, first time. Any... It was also my first triathlon yesterday, so I wouldn't call myself a triathlete. <laughs> I'm actually a swimmer. I grew up swimming, uh, so I just I'm kind you're of like, dabbling in jack, land sports. Jack of all trades. <laughs> okay, so you wrote it today. Maybe like to some of our female listeners out there that weren't here, what are maybe some tips you can give the girls from what you saw today of like, hey, like this is kind of what it's like? Um... I mean, I think that, like, the girls that I met on the ride today are awesome. They're super supportive, and they were, you know, giving me tips on, you know, kind of what to expect on a race day, uh, kind of, I guess, what, what tips to other female riders. Just yeah, I mean, because, like, you were here, you rode it, so, like, people that weren't here, like, what can you maybe give them a little tip from what you saw today? I mean, it's an awesome community, I think, if... if uh, just from like the social aspect, it was great to like share a beer with some like awesome badass ladies who who also ride. I would say to other women, just like just show up, just come out. And, like it's a great community, and people will support you. And I think a lot of women don't want to get into, or they're afraid to to go on rides because they might get left behind, or they feel like they're too slow. But like you got to start somewhere, and I think it starts with just showing up. Um, and the community is is very supportive, at least I found, and like. You're not going to get dropped. Like someone's going to help you keep a flat tire. Like that, that's been my experience. So I would honestly just say, show up and and give it a shot. Perfect. I like it. All right. Well, thanks for coming out, hanging out, and best of luck with whatever you're doing next weekend. <laughs> Trying out. <laughs> I think I think I need like a rest two weeks actually after this weekend, which was not... rest until the VWR in a month. Actually, <laughs> uh, yeah, I need some recovery time for the legs for sure. Perfect. All right. Thank you.